For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to GibboPresents.com. Not only have you managed to rise to the top in the ultra competitive music industry but you've managed to stay there for a long time which is really quite an accomplishment what would you say are the keys to your success and how have you managed to maintain this position well i think from a street perspective i respect people you know from being a dj a sound man when somebody would hire massive b i would get there early like get there at a, uh, a proper time not star time even though we feel like we stars but get there at a proper time you know and, and there's no people in and move with the times like i just told you about the pressing of 45s and this that and the other a 15 year old kid a 20 year old kid don't even know nothing about no 45 or a vinyl they go online and just get their music for free so i try to move with the times and stay relevant you know i mean you know, like, say in Brooklyn or whatever, the dances used to be more Carib-American. Now some of the kids are more American-Carib. So you you better know your latest hip-hop music if you're playing for them. You know what I'm saying? And know your soca music or whatever. So you just, like, really staying relevant to the times, I think. That's a key thing. You can't live in the past now. Like, there's a young girl, say, for instance, that works at Hot 97. Here's a funny story, right? And so I say, yo, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, Bobby, you produce. I say, yeah, well, yeah, check out my new rhythm. And she said, oh, the Skateland rhythm. She said, oh, yeah, that's nice, man. That's the kind of reggae music my mommy listens to. <laughs> so like for some of the younger generation, say in New York, they, they you know, it, it's like one drop reggae is more of an adult music or whatever. But not everybody. But I'm just saying, because these kids, a lot of these kids that are even from the Caribbean, they're more American now. They might be Millie rocking and shmoney dancing and, you know, hit the quan and, you know what I mean? Doing the latest hip hop dance and two soca. And then they, you know, like, you know, they, they vibes with Cartel or Movado, in my leg and Ray, Ray, Ray. You know what I mean? But if any dance you go to still, if it's, if it's, if, if it's a, like a Jamaican type dance, if, they, if the selectors know how to early warm, when you first go into the dance, what's the first thing you usually do? You build your spliff. You get your first drink. That's Hennessy or Guinness or Heineken or whatever. And you build. But if you going into the dance and they playing showtime rhythm or some hype rhythm at one o'clock, you, you don't even got time to build. Now, maybe that's, just, uh, that's the way I like to set a dance. But you know what I mean? It's all every to each his own, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just adapt to the situation. Let's put it that way. And work with it because that's how you stay in the game. Of course, and then I think the key thing is, <clears throat> you know, respect the public, show love because you know people are out, people globally, and even in New York and Brooklyn and Bronx are suffering. People are, you know, there's not a lot of money out there. So for somebody to come to your party or just come here, you DJ, you know, show love. Over the last 15 years or so, there's been lots of advancements when it comes to DJ technology. Things have gone from vinyl and turntables to CDs and CDJs to oh. MP3s and controllers. Do you think these changes were for the better or did you prefer those days of turning up with crates full of vinyl? You mean every, everybody got a fucking cue point nobody got to go to a record store no more and and fucking dig up records they just go online and they don't have to put no work into it i guess it's for them they don't know about that work we used to put in go to the record shops and i used to have a joy just going to the record shops digging up records you know what i'm saying this you know because i was in the studio we was doing hip-hop beats too and you know all kind of music you know and i love all kind of music so i mean for me what i've experienced and what i've gone through and went through i loved it you know what i'm saying i love it i mean uh, for them, it, it, that's that's what they know. So you can't fight them for what they know if they're not exposed. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I loved. I used to walk in with a hand truck, my 45 crate, my dub box, and then my hip -hop, my 12 inch hip hop box or whatever. And I used to because I mean, you know, I was selling records back then, so that was you know. 
part of the love. I mean, you know, even though we should spend a lot, I mean, I spent a lot of money voicing dub plates and a lot of money cutting dub plates. You know, now it's just like, just send the rhythm here, they can go voice it here, email it back to you, you just mix it, and it's just a whole different game. You know, but it's technology. I mean, I don't know. I mean, some people that are, say they're the most civilized are really the most uncivilized for the things they do globally. And that's just the whole religious and political. So. <laughs> I've heard you tell the story of how you first met Jabba in the Bronx when you were going to clash another selector who didn't show up. How often do promoters contact you today and try and write Massive B a huge check to try and entice you into a clash? Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, it was, you know, cool or whatever. I mean, we tried, we were supposed to do it a couple times in the, in the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? What happened was we supposed to go to Bermuda, or one of, Bermuda, Bahamas, and then the one guy, guy got, the main promoter got locked up for some murder business or whatever. And one thing led to another. And I just, uh, it, I mean, I was more, into it, I guess, into the 90s to try to make it happen or whatever as we were building our name. Uh, but I didn't really build the sound that way. And I've, yeah, I got everybody on dub plate and everything, but I know how to, the class thing go or whatever. And a lot of times, like, I voiced dubs just because I love the music and voiced the artist the way I wanted to voice him where I could play the song. A lot of times, with like especially for the, the Clash Arena, you have to voice it a certain way, change the lyrics and so forth. You know what I mean? And sometimes the song don't sound good doing that. And I still want to play the song in a regular dance. You know what I'm saying? I believe me, I spent as mu a lot of money on dub plates. Uh, and obviously the Bounty Killers and so forth always just sound good because that was that era. Today's DJ, a lot of them dubs, they can't really capture what they do on record because there's just so much effects digitally on their voice. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so many layers of the vocals and this, that, the other. I know I kind of diverted from the question, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I found success, you know, being a producer and touring, playing the music, and it worked good for me. You know what I'm saying? And I know as a New York sound, kind of what we did, globally from a production standpoint and touring the world not no one really did that uh getting, touching all the festivals globally europe especially and so forth uh but i just as the work and the success w was coming in it just we never really had to go down that lane and then as years went by, Jabba's become more of a personality, you know, uh, with, 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 and more really more of a promoter and focused more on that. And he's it's, it's like a party MC, you know. He never really, after a couple of years and as he matured, he didn't really want to go in that lane of the Clash MC. Obviously, I've had other people on the sound that, you know, uh, Possibly we was going to go in that direction, but it, it, it just never, uh, you know, after doing it so long, it just never really, you know, like, you know, stressed. I felt the need that I had to go in that direction. You know, I was massive. B, been running New York for so many years and being booked out so much. Uh, and then, you know, globally being booked out that I'm, I was content. Okay, we're the juggling sound. It's cool. But we can play alongside anybody and, and hold it, you know, because we have, you know, I always voiced, you know, and spent the bread and and we got, you know, the dub plates, you know what I'm saying, with them, all the big artists and, you know, so forth and so on, you know, so that's just, I was comfortable with that. And then, you know, I just, you know, the game changed and I was still being booked out, you know. Now, obviously, I think uh, the computer... One thing the computer has done, from what I see, has devalued the sound of the DJ. And what I mean by that is, everybody, there's not much, you don't have to put as much work into being a DJ when it comes to getting the music. So you can just go online and get the music. Now you have a laptop, you download Serato, now you're a DJ. Ray, Ray, Ray. 
and you know now you know uh you can you know the, the younger generations is you can go to book <clears throat> you know book book uh some you know it's, you know kids with laptops now you know what i'm saying <laughs> Because the DJing thing has just become easier, if, if, if you follow what I'm saying. Whereas back in the day, you would have to spend bread, your money, getting records. Now you don't. <laughs> as I you, don't know if that had anything to do with <laughs> As you mentioned, the Massive B dub box is deep and everybody I knows that. I guess if the that. check is big enough, if the check is big enough, we would do it. You would, you would clash if the check was big enough today? I guess. I mean, you know, just to eat the food. I got a daughter in college. I got a six-year-old son. I mean, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you know, I mean, for the for the sport of it, you know what I'm saying? I like I like it. I like I enjoy clashes. I enjoy clashes when they're based more around music than this to them see up. When it, you know, when the MCs is up there cussing and I don't find it entertaining and the song plays for 15 seconds. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind like hardcore juggling, but you know, I got, you know, this, the, the cussing, the cussing, the back and forth, the two MCs. I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. Jabba never wanted to go in that direction. I guess there'll be other people on it. I mean, you know, Major Hype was on the sound for five years, but you know, his comedian career took off, and me and him were talking about it. But his Instagram comedian career took off. Uh, you know, now, you know, in Fire Sundays, you know, we have younger guys playing on the sound x-man and ak and then <clears throat> who i've been working with lately over the last year is a guy named lando hype out of new jersey you know uh you know he's an mc on massive b and so forth but uh you know well, i don't know i mean i ain't stressing you know what i'm saying people hire massive b to be entertained a lot of times and i'm cool with that as you mentioned, the Massive B dub box is very deep. Are you able to say, on average, how many dubs you would cut per month? Well, no, not really, because I just try to get the hot songs. You know, today getting the hot songs, a lot of times, like, if you voice a hot song, if you want to because a lot of them artists, if you try to change it and have them go on a different rhythm other than because a lot of these songs were built for these rhythms. You know what I'm saying? And and they may not sound good if you put on a rubber dub rhythm or a different kind of rhythm. But I don't I don't know. I don't know. I mean I got a lot of the, a lot of the in New York, in these juggling parties, this young generation doesn't want to hear too much. They don't care about a dub plate. You know what I'm saying? It's sad, but that's just where the thing gone. But I still voice. I mean, we voiced, you know, Jamil. I got a bunch of Mavado the other day, and so forth. Uh, I just, you know, I keep it. I keep it relevant and keep it strong because just when I go globally, I think people expect. You know, they have a standard and they expect Master B to be that be on that standard. You recently made an appearance on Fox Five News along with Jabba and Junior Reed, and you spoke about the influence of reggae. Would you like to do more of these kind of appearances in the future, educating and spreading the word about reggae oh, music to an audience oh, that's, that's not familiar with it? They made the link and it was love. You know what I'm saying? That was a good look. You know what I'm saying? So that that was all good. It was just a good look, you know? Uh, yeah, whoever wants to holler, holler. <laughs> you know what I mean? His new production, This Skateland Rhythm, is out now on iTunes. Listen to him on Hot 97, Sunday nights, new time. 9 to 11. New time, 9 p.m., 9 to 11. But when you say Skateland Rhythm, right, because I don't... Did we get to go into the Skateland Rhythm? What else would you like to say about it, Bobby? I got to big up Boro Banton. I got to big up Boro Banton because I met Boro Banton back like in 1989 and built more ballroom when him, him and Supercat performed and he voiced some dub plates for me. And then a couple years later, we just connected. He was in the Bronx. And when you think of Master B, you think, you know, he wasn't on every rhythm still, but the majority of them, you think of you know, been rolling out. That's family. And then I got this big up all the artists on the skate line rhythm, like Junior Reed, Eka Mouse, Chronicle and everybody. Just, you know what I mean? The rhythm bad. So the big up all the artists. 
And then uh, I got a big up Jabba as well. Uh, you know, and, and like we were talking earlier about the, the direction, I got a big up Jabba. He's been doing one of the biggest uh, reggae dancehall shows in America for the last 10 years called Best of the Best in Florida with uh, uh, Butterfuco and so forth. And it's a real big show. And I think this year will be their 10th year doing it. And you talk like 15, 20,000 people. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, just go check out MasterB.com. Get at me on Instagram, Bobby Condes with a K, ladies. I am expect accepting new friends. K-O-N-D-E-R-S. No. <laughs> just talking shit. It's all good. You know what I mean? Big up Lando Hype in Jersey. Newest, newest member of Massive B. And this the whole squad. Big up the streets for making Massive B relevant all these years. The streets. Streets. Big up the street. Brooklyn, Bronx, Harlem. Big up all the European crew, African crew. You know what I mean? We out here. We out here, son. We doing it. No. <laughs> I know some of the reggae people be bugging. Yo, that dude sound bad Yankee. Yeah, man. BK all day. New York, baby. <laughs> Bobby, thanks a lot. Gibbo, Gibbo presents... presents.